the community raised $100,000 and started donating $500 a month. The sympathy money was rolling in by the thousands, all with heartfelt intent from friends and churchgoers to help a young woman with a horrible cancer diagnosis. I heard the words, you have stage three blood cancer. Amanda Riley, a bubbly California wife and mom and self-proclaimed devout Christian, eagerly joined the cancer warrior community. I'm a terminal patient, so I'm in a clinical trial just trying to buy more time. Her case even caught the attention of celebrities from Leanne Rhymes to Glee's Matthew Morrison. But Amanda's real diagnosis was about to change. The information that Amanda gave didn't make sense. These things are not adding up. I don't think she's sick. Everyone knows. Turns out she didn't have cancer at all. It was just one big money-grabbing scam. After bilking her community of close to a quarter of a million dollars, Riley was arrested and is doing time in a federal prison. Her story is now in the headlines with the release of the ABC Studios and Hulu documentary series, Scamanda. She was a liar. Why would somebody fake cancer? True Crime News Managing Editor Nancy Moscatello first discovered Amanda Riley's scam. Nancy is a producer on the docuseries and a longtime colleague of mine. You've been working on this case for years, and early on, you assigned me a part of this case <laughs> to work on. I remember saying to you, it's how are you going to prove a negative? How are you going to prove that someone doesn't have cancer in this world of HIPAA laws? It was her blog. She was so detailed. She gave so much information. Once I got a hold of that, it was full of information I could fact check. That was her downfall, because when you can prove they're lying, then all other things fall into place. Scamanda, based on the number one podcast by the same name, takes a deep dive into this elaborate con with so many victims. So as far as victims are concerned, the list that the government submitted was 347 victims. Amanda documented everything, posting pictures on her website and updating her supposed cancer treatments. It was all a fake. I don't think she was like a super genius in the world of crime, but what she was hiding behind, I don't think she realized how much it did protect her to get away with it for as long as she did. With HIPAA laws, you can't just call up and say, oh, you know, I see she was at your facility today. Is she your patient? Please, search warrant! Nancy's investigation prompted cops to start digging. The two of us were there in the Bay Area when local police and federal agents raided Amanda's house. It looks like Amanda's husband is coming out. If you're defrauding someone, um, it becomes a financial crime, whether it's an individual or a business or even the government. With her lies unraveling, Amanda was busted. She pleaded guilty to wire fraud and was sentenced to five years. This was the first time a cancer scammer of this, like through wire fraud, was ever prosecuted through the federal government. Now, as Amanda sits behind bars, viewers will get a behind-the-scenes look at the woman now infamously named Scamanda. What are we going to see on the docu-series that either will be different or reinforce the podcast? You will hear from Amanda. You will see Amanda in all her glory. Every hospital visit, every surgery, anything she was claiming to have done, she documented. When you finally see the bandages, the port, the IVs, you can actually say like, oh my God, I can see how she got away with this for so long. Scamanda debuts October 16th. It was only a matter of time until Amanda's whole world came tumbling down.